Okay, so today we're going to look at pork production. Okay, so what's pork? Who has an idea what pork means? Yeah. Type of meat? Absolutely. It like, comes from a pig. Comes from a pig. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's exactly right. So we're going to look at pork production today. Oops, I don't even get them all. There we go. Um, okay, so we're going to talk for pigs about from birth to market. We're going to talk about what pigs eat, different uh, byproducts and cuts that we have from pork, um, and how farmers care for their pigs every single day of the year. We talk about that a lot in here because it's very important. And then how farmers work to provide us with safe food. So there's going to be little pictures today on our screen. It's going to kind of walk us through um, the different elements of a uh, pork production. So what do you notice in this picture? We've got our little friends here, but what, are we, what else do we notice? Yeah. Yep, they're working on a farm. Absolutely. What else do we notice? Yeah. Yeah. Over here? Yeah. Yep, those are the grain bins. So whenever they harvest their crops, their beans and their corn, that's where they store it, or any kind of grain, really. Um, but th they use these to store the feed for their hogs. So that's a great observation. What else? Um, yeah. Uh, that is where the pigs are Yep, that's where the pigs live, absolutely. What else do we notice? Yeah. They're on a farm. Yeah, what do we see? What's something that they drive in the picture? Yeah, what's something they drive? Yeah. They drive a tractor. Is there a tractor in this picture? No. That's a truck, yeah. So they drive the truck around on the farm to do different chores and things like that, right? Pretty much every farmer has a truck, at least one of some kind, to help him do chores. Um, these are some more silos over here that hold more grain, perhaps, or they might be old and out of commission, I don't know. Um, but there's barns over here that they probably have pigs in. They've got barns over here that look like equipment sheds. They've got a lot of stuff going on here on this farm. So here are different types of pigs, and this is going to be very important later on for our activity. Um, but for the, in the state of Missouri, these are three of the most popular breeds. So we have a Duroc here. They're a, kind of a red color, um, and their ears are floppy. They hang down over their eyes like this, so when they walk, their ears flop, just like this. Um, the other two are called a Berkshire, so they have white legs like that, and their ears are up. Um, and the same thing with a Hamp. They have that white stripe up in the front, and their ears are up as well. Um, and those are three very popular swine breeds here in the state of Missouri. So here we're going to take another tour of the part of the farm. So a lot of pork producers have been raising pig, pigs for a lot of years. And a lot of times they'll grow crops on their farm to be able to feed to their pigs. So these are what some of the swine barns might look like. Um, you can see they're very open on the sides and they let air come through. And that's where the pigs live in there. They're temperature controlled. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But <clears throat> um, pork facilities are very clean. They're very good. Um, we will see more of the inside here in just a second. So, when you're a pig farmer, just like all the other kinds of farmers, you have a lot of things you have to do every day to take care of those animals. Animals need fresh water, they need fresh food. Um, every single day they have to make sure that all those feeders and waterers are full and working. They also have to make sure that they are in good health. They go and they check on their health to make sure they're not injured or sick or anything like that. And if there's some sort of problem, then they will go take care of that immediately. Uh, so whenever you do go to a pork facility, there's a lot of biosecurity, which means they work very hard to make sure they don't spread disease. So for us, we wash our hands, we use hand gel, we sneeze into our arms, right? Those are some of the things we do to make sure that we don't get our friends sick. Um, whenever we go to a pork facility, we have to put little booties on our uh, boots. Or Miss Carrie and I went to a pork facility this weekend and we had to put on special boots and special clothes to make sure that we didn't take anything from the outside in. So you have to be very careful to not track in any kind of diseases when you go these places. So here's an example of what the inside of a pork facility look like, looks like. As you can see, they are indoors, but it's very clean, right? 
This is a temperature controlled area so that whenever it is cold outside, like it is right now, it's warm inside. So those pigs are well taken care of. When it's hot outside, it's cool in there um, so that the pigs don't get, get too hot when they're in the barn. Pigs have a very hard time sweating and regulating their body temperature. So it's very important for these farmers to regulate the temperature on the inside to make sure that they don't get too hot or too cold because that could happen very easily. They also have large fans um, that move the air around in there, so that's good too. So here are some of the piglets, some of the babies, um, and the sprinkler, there are sprinkler systems that can be used if the pigs get too warm, they don't sweat, um, but to keep them warm, we also use heat lamps. So the regulating of their body temperature is a very tricky thing to do. Uh, per <laughs> farmers work really hard to do that. Okay, so here's the nursery. This is where the littler pigs are. You can see it looks similar to um, the other barn that we looked at, but it's just a little bit, the pigs are a little bit smaller. Um, the, there's slats in the floor so that any waste goes through the floor um, and doesn't stay in there and make it all gross. They have big fans as well. Everything's clean and well lit and temperature controlled so that these pigs live a really good life when they're in these barns. So these are um, some examples of when the pigs are born. These are pretty good sized piglets. They're about to be weaned, I'd say. Um, but the, the farrowing crate right there, that's where the mama lays whenever she gives birth to them. Because sometimes the sows are so big, um, whenever the pigs are little, if she doesn't have this crate, sometimes she might accidentally lay on them because she's so big and they're so little. She doesn't know any different. She doesn't mean to. But this crate is to help them be able to nurse and get the milk that they need while she can relax and hang out and she doesn't have to worry about accidentally laying on our babies. So it's a win-win for everybody. Um, they, these are getting ready to be weaned. I'd say they're about three weeks old. Um, so they're getting ready to be taken from their mom. Okay, so down here, a pig who has not had a baby is called a gilt. So that's what some of these are here. Then uh, this board here, this is how you move pigs, okay? So it's, it's called a board and it's made out of plastic most of the time. Um, and this swine barn worker here, he's trying to move these pigs away from him, okay? So if I have my board, and this is my, do you wanna be a pig for a minute? You don't wanna be a pig? Who wants to be a pig? Okay, you wanna be a pig? Come on up. Okay, so here's our little pig here, okay? So she's walking this way. And I say, oh no, I want her to go this way. If I have my board, I put it right here in front of her. So she can't walk through my board, right? So she's gonna say, oh, okay, I'm gonna go this way. If I want her to turn and go this way, I'm gonna put the board in front of her here, right? So she's gonna say, oh no, I can't go that way now. So she's gotta go this way, okay? You can sit down, thank you, Miss Piggy. <laughs> okay, so this board here keeps them from seeing and then they, they don't turn, they don't, Go, the, go a certain way, and that's how you move pigs because their eyes are so low to the ground. Whenever you're standing like this, they can't see you. They see right through your legs, and where might they go? Whoop, right through, right? And then you'll end up on the ground. That's not fun any, for anybody. So you have to use these boards to keep their vision where you want it to be. Okay, so pigs eat a lot of things like corn, soybeans, and sometimes wheat or barley. It just depends on the farmer and what he wants to put in his ration. Um, there are also watering systems that are put in place so that they have easy access to water. Pigs, a lot of times, they kind of like to make a mess. They like to tip the uh, water troughs over. If you just have a bucket sitting in there, they'll tip it over. They'll dump it out. They'll want to make mud pies, right? Um, they're silly little animals. So you have to have um, a watering system to where they can walk up. Raise your hand if you've ever had a guinea pig or a hamster. Not that many. Have you ever seen an animal in a cage that has a waterer on the side where it walks up and it drinks out of the little metal thing? Okay, yeah. So that's kind of what the pigs do. They have watering pipes and watering systems. They can walk up to the fence and then they can suck the water right out of those pipes because if they're just in a big bucket in there like we do maybe for cattle or other animals, they'll dump it out every time and make a big mess, right? Then it's a mess for them and they don't have water to drink. So you have to make sure that they have them in these systems here. Okay. So a lot of times um, facilities will have veterinarians that come out to check the pigs fairly regularly. Um, but uh, at the very least, they'll have them on call so that they can come out and treat them if they are sick or need any kind of medicine or if they're injured or if they're having babies and they need some help. Um, there's a lot of things that the veterinarian does to check on the pig health. Um, so she's got a clipboard in her hand here. So here's our two swine barn workers. You can see they have their little outfits on. 
Miss Carrie and I wore outfits just like that last weekend. Um, and then this, the, the vet here has her clipboard. What are some of the things you think you think she might write on her clipboard? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. So if they are going to have babies, she might write down how far along they are, right? All of that is really good information to know. Yeah, what's something else? She might write down what, what the doctor says and what the pigs need. Mm -hmm, what the pigs need, absolutely. Yeah, what do you think? Yes. If they're healthy or not healthy, if they need medicine, right? She'll write that down on her clipboard. Yeah, what else? Um, what do they do with the runts? The runts? They are just in the group with the rest of them. Are you talking about Charlotte's Web? Yeah. Is that the book you're thinking of? Yeah. So in that book, he's separated, right? Because he is the runt, he's smaller. Um, but as far as I know, in pig production, they don't separate them. They just keep them in with their brothers and sisters, and they're, in, they're just like a normal pig. They're just a little bit smaller. Yeah, what's something else? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Health stats, right? And keeping track of what they give her, what they, uh, what they treat the pigs with. Excellent. Okay. One more. Yeah. You have one more? Yes, ma'am. We got some future veterinarians in here, I think, Ms. Cavins. You want to be a veterinarian? Okay, well, there you go. You'll get some a jumpsuit and a clipboard just like this girl. Um, but, yeah, those are all really good answers, right? Um, so it's very important for the vets to keep track of. If you all are my little piggies, it's going to be hard for me to keep track. If you're sick and you're having babies and you don't feel good and you got medicine, oh, my gosh, how am I going to keep track of all that, right? you got to write it all down. So that's one of the things that they write on their clipboards whenever they go through the barn. So here she is checking on them. Um, checking down to see if they are sick or hurt or anything like that. So this is what she does in order to get the information to write on her clipboard. Or um, nowadays, it might be something like an iPad, right? We use a lot of technology in agriculture and things like that. So she may record some of that stuff on an iPad if she has technology to do that. Um, so, yeah, she's checking on her pigs, and they're looking at her like, what the heck are you doing, lady, right? Um, but then they will go on about their merry way. So here's the finishing barn. This is the last phase where the pigs spend their life. Um, as you can see here, it's just the same as the other ones. It's clean, well lit, well circulated, has a lot of big fans and open areas. Um, so they live a really good life. I think this is one of the feeders here. You can kind of see that's where the farmer puts the feed so that it goes down in and the pigs eat right out of that. Yes. Yes, what's your question? How do they cook them? Well, that's just however you want to cook them. Whenever the meat is done, you buy it at the store, and then whoever is cooking gets to decide how they want to cook it, depending on the cut of meat that you have. Okay, so farmers utilize a lot of things that are right on their farm. So a lot of times pork producers will raise crops that they then turn around and feed to their animals. The place that Carrie and I were at this weekend did that exact same thing. Um, they raised a bunch of bean and beans and corn. Um, that they were cutting when we were there to then turn around and feed to all of the hogs that they had. So it was a really cool thing to see um, how all of that works together. This is another example here of what one of the barns might look like. And these are um, feeders. So the feed goes into here so that then the farmer can take the feed out um, and go feed it to their animals, whatever that looks like on their operations. So there's a lot of good technology and things that goes into uh, the pork production. So there are, um, whenever the hogs put their waste out 
It's often collected and then that is recycled and reused back as fertilizer onto the fields and the plants that they have. So whether that's pasture ground or beans or corn or whatever, um, that's a big thing that they do on a lot of pork facilities because their waste is very good fertilizer. So they'll turn around and put that right back onto the soil, which helps the uh, crops grow, which makes more feed for the pigs to eat, right? So it's just a big cycle. Yes, ma'am. Is the what? The barn so long. Yes, that's a good question. It's because there's a lot of pigs in there, right? They have a lot of different stages of life that they they have in the same barn. So they'll separate based on age and they need a lot of space to do that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And we had it for like a day or two, but then my grandpa's friend, then he, he had a bunch so of then he taught the pig, and then the pig actually was happy there. Yeah, ha pigs are happiest in the barn, right? They don't belong in the house. Okay, so there are over 500 different products that come from pigs, right? We've, we talked about beef cattle and how we use a lot of their diff body parts mm -hmm. uh, for different things. It's the same way for pork. So plastic, glue, buttons, leather, chalk, matches, flooring, medicine, and heart valves all come from pigs. So there have been times when um, a human needs a heart valve replacement, and a pig heart was the best option because their hearts are very similar to ours. So sometimes a human is able to use a pig heart valve instead of a human, and then that saves human lives, which is pretty cool. Yep. That's a really good question. I think maybe at first it may be a little bit of an adjustment for somebody because obviously if you have heart surgery, you're gonna have a lot of things to get back to your normal life, right? Um, so I don't know, I'm not a heart doctor, I'm not a surgeon, so I don't know exactly, but I would imagine there'd be a little bit to get used to, but then after that, I think they're just good as new, good as normal, yes. How much you have to feed a pig per day? That is a great question. Um, I'm honestly not that sure how much they eat every single day. I would imagine anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds of feed. That might be a little high. I'm not sure. Um, but it, they're smaller than cows, and cows eat about, depending on the farmer and what stage of life they're in, 40 pounds a day-ish. Depending, like I said, depending on the stage of life and what kind of cow it is. So, yeah, maybe 10 pounds. I'm not sure. It's a good question. Yes. Mm-hmm, so that's a good question. So what happens to us when we eat a lot? We get fat. <laughs> we get fat, we grow, right? So the same thing happens to pigs. The more they eat, the bigger they get. So then yes, in, in the big picture, that would be the more, more of this they could make because they have a bigger body, right? Yeah, yep. Okay, so here's the good stuff, right? The pork that we like to eat. Raise your hand if you like ham. Yes, me too. What about bacon? Ooh, yeah. Good stuff, right? Um, sausage, anybody like sausage in here with their breakfast and their eggs? Yeah. Okay, so this is where the different cuts of meat comes from. So these kind of have some silly names, but the ham comes from back here. The loin is up at the top. If you have had pork loin before, that's where it comes from. Um, any kind of pork spare ribs, if you had pork ribs before, or the bacon comes from the belly down here. Um, this is the picnic shoulder, so a lot of pork roasts and things like that come from up here. And then um, the shoulder butt is the name up here. And isn't that silly? <laughs> shoulder butt. I don't know why they call it that, but that's, that's the name of it. Doesn't make any sense, but that's what it's called. Yes, ma'am. Is there a lot of fat on the bacon since it comes from the stomach? Yes. <laughs> They call bacon a meat, but it has a, it's a very, very fatty meat because that, of where it's located. Um, and that's just that kind of cut of meat. So yeah, that's a really good observation. Yes. Um, so on the back part, when someone needs heart surgery, mm -hmm. um, do they have to take the pig's heart out and replace it with the human's heart? 
No, it'll be so the pig probably it has died for some other reason, and they just use the heart. They're able to use that still to save a human's life. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, the pig doesn't take the heart, put it into a human's body, mm -hmm. and use it. Yep, yeah, just the valve, not the whole heart. They have to, um, like, like, like the valve, like the part of the heart, mm -hmm. like this part. Mm -hmm. like yep. We've got some future veterinarians and heart surgeons in here, Miss Cavens. I hope you're aware of that. Yes. Oh gosh, why? Because it's the end of the shoulder. <laughs> oh, the end of the shoulder? That <laughs> yep, that is a very good guess. I wasn't sure what the guess was going to be for that. Yes. <laughs> so, so, like, so, like, if you take the pig's heart, uh -huh. then couldn't you replace it with the human's heart? Then if, if you give the human person the pig's heart to the human, uh -huh. would it act like a pig because it's <laughs> That's a, you would think so, but no, we're just taking the piece. We're just taking one of the valves out of the pig's heart and putting it and replacing a valve of the human heart. So it's not the whole pig heart, just the valve. So that we're, we're not going to go around oinking and eating off the ground, right? We're not going to turn into a pig. That's a good guess, though. Okay, hold your questions until the end, you guys, in case I answer them, okay? We're going to keep going. Did you know the United States is one of the largest pork producing countries in the world? Yeah, and more than 6.5 million of those hogs are produced every year right here in Missouri. Wow. It takes 4 billion pounds of grain to keep them all fed. Wow. But for Missouri farmers, it's no problem because the corn and soybeans we need are grown right here in the United States. There are thousands of dedicated pork producers in Missouri who take pride in raising hogs. And the most important part of their job is to make sure they're all well taken care of. Most pork producers keep their hogs inside climate-controlled buildings. In the heat of summer, the pigs are kept cool with large fans and misters. In the winter, when the snow is deep and the wind chill is way below zero, brrr, the hogs are kept warm with high-tech heating systems. The buildings also make it easy for pork producers to keep their pigs fed. Now, here's how it works. First, the feed supplier mixes vitamins and minerals with the grain to create a nutritionally balanced diet. Then, the feed is delivered to the farm where it's emptied into large bins. The feed travels through long tubes which lead to feeders. Also, when pigs get thirsty, they have access to fresh water whenever they need it. An important part of taking care of the pigs is making sure they stay healthy. Veterinarians check on the pigs from time to time and prescribe medicine when they need it. With all this attention, I'd say these pigs are living like royalty, wouldn't you? Let's take a quick break to play Pig Trivia. Here we go. True or false, a pig is capable of running a seven minute mile. True. Here's another one. True or false, pigs don't sweat. True again. Pigs don't have sweat glands and are not capable of sweating. So that's why pork producers use misters to keep the pigs comfortable. Okay, one more. True or false, pork production contributes millions to our state's economy and creates a wide variety of jobs. The answer is true. Veterinarians, truck drivers, feed mill workers, carpenters, equipment manufacturers, meat processors, and many more benefit from the pork industry. Okay, now back to the show. One of the first stages of pork production is called farrowing. This is where baby pigs or piglets are born. The mother, who is called a sow, averages a litter of 10 to 11 piglets. The newborn piglets need extra warmth. So heat lamps and mats are used to keep the temperature at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is in the pig zone. At birth, each pig only weighs two to three pounds, but they won't stay lightweights for long. Newborn pigs gain their strength and size from the milk they receive from their mother. In just one week, they'll actually double their weight. The stalls are designed to keep mom comfortable and give her enough room to move around. The stalls also protect the piglets from being squished by mom when she lays down to rest. After one month, the pigs are weaned from the sow. They're moved to a nursery where they're fed a special diet of corn, soybeans, and other nutrients. The pigs grow rapidly. 
they can gain as much as two pounds per day. When the pigs are two months old, they will weigh somewhere between 40 and 60 pounds. When they reach the ripe old age of just six months, they'll weigh in at a whopping 250 pounds. At this point, they're ready for market. Pigs provide us with nutritious and delicious pork chops, roasts, ribs, ham, and many other pork cuts. They also provide us with heart valves, insulin, glue, crayons, gelatin, buttons, pig skin, fertilizer, rubber, cement, and the list goes on. You could say we depend on them as much as they depend on us. Mm.